So I've never watched The Amazing World of Gumball before. This is a pretty popular cartoon that everyone seems to love. It seems quirky, it seems cute, but what I said at the very start is true. I've actually never watched an episode of the show, like, ever. Hell, I've barely even seen any clips of it, so I honestly have no idea what to even expect. That being said, I obviously do recognize some of the characters because of, like, memes and stuff. I'm guessing this guy's name is Gumball. I see him all the time. There's this orange dude. I don't know what his name is. He reminds me of the fish from American Dad. There's also this pink dude who's probably Gumball's dad or something, maybe? I don't know. Anyway, before all the Gumball mega fans get mad at me and spam my home address in the comments, I think it would be a good idea for me to just stop randomly guessing things about this show and just start watching it. Like other shows I've covered on the channel, I'm gonna be watching two episodes today, one from the very first season and one from the very last season. See if I notice any major differences and if the writing quality got better or worse. Nothing else to really say, so let's just jump into it, I guess. Our first episode is called The Prank. I picked this episode entirely on its name, since pranks are cool and it made me think of Sal from Impractical Jokers. We start with our three main characters in this episode. Gumball, he's blue. Darwin, he's orange. And Richard, who is actually the dad, I think? You are the father! So everyone's having breakfast when Gumball asks his dad to pass the sugar. This is a very important character making moment because as soon as Gumball takes a bite, this happens. <laughs> Darwin, being a 3 million IQ gamer, figures Gumball probably just didn't put enough sugar in his cereal. So he puts even more in, which is when this happens. Of insanity. So it turns out the dad actually swapped the sugar with the salt, which is why the cereal just tastes like shit. Very epic prank. Vitaly would be proud. So the dad's bragging about how this is probably the greatest prank of all time and no one could ever beat it. But then, in what's probably a completely unrelated action, Gumball asks his dad if the hole in this ketchup bottle looks funny to him. What an unbelievably normal question to ask someone. Anyway, the dad looks down the bottle and obviously he gets sprayed in the face with like a bunch of ketchup. So Gumball gets his revenge literally right away. <laughs> so far, each character seems a little stupid? <laughs> like the dad is clearly very gullible and childish and the boys also seem silly and it's probably just because it's a cartoon and they're doing cartoon things but so far everyone seems pretty similar in character. Keep in mind this is also my first time watching the show ever so sorry if I get anything wrong you know correct me in the comments leave a comment leave a like subscribe hit the bell. So Richard the dad is sad now because he got pranked back. He's so sad actually that he runs off the screen crying. This reminds me of every Mortal Kombat player when they found Ermac in the crypt. <laughs> Also, I have to mention here that for some reason, Darwin calls Richard Mr. Dad instead of just Dad. <laughs> so maybe that's like not his father? I honestly have no idea. Anyway, we skip ahead now and the boys are playing some video games and all of a sudden, Richard shows up with two brand new pairs of shoes. He says he just bought them and he would love for his boys to try them out. Gumball isn't fooled, however, and immediately calls the situation out for being a setup to a prank. Richard then has a Donnie Thornberry moment. Fuck me, prank you, Richard! <laughs> no! Oh, no! <laughs> and decides to just quit the prank early to save himself the embarrassment. We then get a pretty funny cutaway bit where Richard is returning the shoes, but the guy at the counter is like, You seem to have filled them with baked beans. I did nothing of the sort, sir! Now's probably a good time to mention the show's weird art style. It mixes animation with realistic elements. I'm not an artist, so, uh, you know, I don't know if there's like a specific term for this look, but as someone who's never watched the show and had no idea what to expect from it, it really kind of took me off guard. Like, visually, it's pretty weird. And I'm pretty sure there's even episodes where there's like straight up just real people in them. It's kind of cursed, not gonna lie. So Richard has reached an all-time low. No matter what he does, he just can't seem to prank his boys. So he decides to listen to a tape recording on how to prank someone properly. I can't help but think that if this episode was made in 2023, he would have AirPods and an iPad mini. Am I right? <laughs> This isn't gonna go well for Richard though because Gumball and Darwin actually got access to the tape recorder and are now talking to him directly. So it's not a recording anymore, it's a live feed. The idea here is that the boys are telling their dad to just do stupid shit. And because Richard's just kind of an idiot, he just listens. They make him go on the roof of the house. They make him take off all his clothes. Oh my God, <laughs> what is that? Yo, why does it kind of look like Jigglypuff when you zoom in on it though? What's going on there? Richard is then told to dance like a ballerina. And listen, it's been a while now and he still doesn't recognize the voice of his own kids, which, you know, is like a little, a little concerning. But then finally he's told to try and go down the chimney, but of course, because of his giant Jigglypuff curves, he gets stuck there all night. Skipping ahead now, and the boys just keep pranking him. Honestly, they just, they just don't stop. He fell asleep at one point, so they just bring him out on a raft and just push him into the ocean, <laughs> let him float away. Uh, it sounds dangerous. I say that, but Mac and Frank both survived it, so I guess he'll be okay. Ah! The next day, Richard's back home and he's setting up another prank. Jesus Christ, this shit never ends. You'll never believe what happens next. Gumball sees the prank coming a mile away, and then everything goes wrong, and Richard just fucking dies for, <laughs> for like the fourth time in this episode. Eddie, <laughs> 
At this point in the story, the kids actually feel kind of bad for their dad, so they finally decide to just take one for the team and let themselves be pranked. They finally want to end the cycle. They see another bucket, this time at the top of their front door, so they go to open it, expecting to get wet. But what happens next is actually a little more sinister. What the what? I'm gonna prank you! Then, in a weird third act twist for the show, the dad turns full Jack Torrance and the kids are now terrified of him. He chases them around the house, presumably to sacrifice them to Satan or something. I don't know, I'm new to this show. <laughs> First the kids hide under the sofa, then the kids hide in the TV, then they just run all over the place. It's kind of like a Scooby-Doo episode, it's great, don't worry about it. And then Richard finally has them cornered. So Gumball then whips out his last ditch effort, a ketchup bottle, to defend himself. And that's when we finally get the big payoff. You leave me no choice! Being a psycho and almost killing his own children was just a setup for a harmless ketchup prank. They're playing checkers, and he's playing chess. Everyone kind of agrees that it was a little funny and makes up, and the episode ends with this scene. <laughs> And that was the prank. I think it was a pretty good introduction to the series. I got to learn a bit about each character shown. Gumball and Darwin don't seem half as gullible or as stupid as I initially thought, so that's good, I guess. The show is still gonna take some getting used to for me, but maybe this next episode will help with that. Let's skip forward now to the very last season of the show to see if it's better, worse, or basically the same. This episode is called BFFs. The S at the end there implies having multiple friends, which is something I'm not familiar with, so... Uh, I'm excited for this one. The story begins with a doorbell ringing and Darwin answering the front door. He sees what he thinks is just some random toy sitting on his porch, but turns out this is just an actual person. Dude, I'm alive. This is just how I look. <gasps> I'm so sorry. It's fine. For you! This guy's name is Fuzzy. He reminds me of one of those Furby toys. Not sure if anyone remembers those. I don't even know if they're still a thing, but yeah, he reminds me of that. Anyway, Gumball shows up and turns out that Fuzzy and Gumball go way back. They're basically best friends. They just haven't seen each other in a couple years. It seems pretty harmless, but the issue with this is that Darwin is secretly a Discord moderator and gets very jealous at the thought of anyone touching his kitten. Darwin asks Gumball how long ago did Fuzzy and him meet. Gumball states that it was probably just a couple years before Darwin arrived. So like, are they brothers? Or maybe stepbrothers? or something? Uh, what's going on here? I don't understand. Anyway, Darwin keeps asking questions about Fuzzy and Gumball's relationship, but then he also just shrugs off every answer he's given. It's kind of manipulative and gives off extreme sociopath behavior, not gonna lie. Things were moving along. We'd moved into a hideout together. Uh, what are you doing now? Oh, just looking for a darn to give. Gumball and Darwin then do their own version of Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard, so Gumball grabs Fuzzy and leaves to spend some time with him. It's during these scenes where we learn a little bit more about Fuzzy and who he is. Turns out he lives in Minnesota. Fuzzy basically just cracks fun about how it's really cold and Minnesota. There's lots of snow and not much else. He also jokes about being a wanted criminal, <laughs> which is funny, I guess. Made any friends? It's hard to tell. Everyone is wearing ski masks all year long. Either I have friends or I'm on a CIA watch list. <laughs> anyway, Fuzzy explains that he does actually have one friend from Minnesota named Hank, but he still just really misses Gumball. And to him, Gumball will always be his best friend. How sweet. It's now late at night and Gumball finally returns home. He feels kind of bad, so he apologizes to Darwin for not telling him about Fuzzy earlier. He also tells Darwin that just because Fuzzy's back doesn't mean that he loves him any less. It's a little sweet, and it's clear that these two are actual best friends. We also get this funny scene. I love you more than elderly people love walking around in their birthday suits and sports locker rooms. <laughs> More than Canadians love telling you which famous people are Canadian. Well, let's see. We have Jim Carrey, Celine Dion, Seth Rogen, Justin Bieber, that's a big one, Ryan Gosling, Ryan Reynolds. The boys decide to all get together and play some video games in an attempt to break the hostility. Everything seems to be going pretty well. We even get this random funny cutaway. It's the remote for Mr. Dad's new massage chair. <laughs> the point is, at this point, everyone seems to be getting along quite well. But then, Gumball decides to leave the room to get some drinks, and we find out that the whole thing was basically just a facade. <laughs> Okay, what's your game, you furry creep muffin? What comes next is a conversation between Darwin and Fuzzy that seems pretty grounded, actually. Basically, Darwin thinks Fuzzy has some nefarious intentions with Gumball, but Fuzzy constantly reassures him that he literally just wants to reconnect with an old friend. And he seems pretty genuine about it, if I'm being honest. This conversation goes back and forth for a while, until Fuzzy decides that he's basically had enough with this, and it's not worth the hassle. He lets Gumball know that Darwin is making things a little weird, and he just leaves the house. In classic rom-com fashion, we now get a whole scene dedicated to the two main characters fighting over a newer third character who's recently been added to the group. Gumball then decides to leave to go see some bronies or something. I don't know. Wait, where are you going? To the brony convention in Lichtenstein. Gumball leaves and actually catches up with Fuzzy and starts walking with him. He's pretty frustrated, so he's venting all his frustrations out, which gets him a little distracted, so he doesn't even realize that he's been walking for like 12 fucking hours at this point. Yeah, turns out Fuzzy actually led him to his house in Minnesota. <laughs> so they just walked that whole way on foot. Anyway, Gumball ends up going inside the house, but it's then when things take a dark turn. 
Welcome back, Gumball. What the what is going on here? This part is kind of scary, so hold on to your Furbies if you got one. Turns out Fuzzy did actually have some sinister intentions, and he lured Gumball to his house in Minnesota so he could keep him prisoner there and be his best friend forever. There's this backstory about how Fuzzy felt abandoned by Gumball at a young age, so this is his way of getting payback. The old ketchup bottle trick from the first episode probably would have worked great here, but, you know, I get his frustration. Anyway, the scene's getting kind of weird when all of a sudden Darwin shows up and whacks Fuzzy in back of the head with a shovel. Turns out he followed both of them the entire way ac across the country. What a perfectly sane thing to do. It's here where Gumball and Darwin make up and are happy to finally admit that they're each other's best friend. But then all of a sudden, Fuzzy wakes up and scares the crap out of everyone. I love you more. No! You're not <laughs> we get this epic chase scene and it also turns out that Fuzzy's like a robot, I guess, which actually makes my Furby theory from earlier more valid, but whatever, it's fine. I predicted it. No big deal. The boys actually try to take Fuzzy out, but it backfires and they get trapped under a tree branch. This is when Fuzzy grabs a giant boulder and is about to finish Darwin off for good when all of a sudden this guy <laughs> who looks like an Undertale character shows up and saves the day. Turns out this is Hank. And if you're confused like I was and have no idea who the fuck that is, it's actually the guy Fuzzy mentioned being friends with at the very beginning of the episode. Like when they were on swings and shit, he said he was friends with Hank. Th that's This is Hank. This is the guy. That's what I call long-term storytelling. Anyway, Hank literally just grabs Fuzzy and w walks away. What a chad. Gumball and Darwin pretty much have no idea what the fuck is going on at this point. And the episode ends with this scene. I'm hungry. Well, I saw a really good taco truck on the way. Where? Somewhere near Wyoming. And that was The Amazing World of Gumball. That was my first time ever watching some episodes. I didn't really know what to expect, especially since none of my friends had really ever watched it either. Yo, you, get, you guys ever watch a show called um, Amazing World of Gumball? Like, I haven't, like, sat down, like, watched multiple episodes, but I've seen it. Like, I've seen a few episodes. And? What do you think? I think it was funny. It's not a bad one. I like it. If you had to rank it, S tier to F tier. Uh, it like, probably up at least an A. It's not a bad what you've seen, uh, yeah, because you haven't seen all yeah. of it. But... Uh, I'm putting it closer to, like, low B for me. Damn. All in all, it was actually really entertaining. Obviously, I only watched two random episodes, so I didn't get a proper feel for the greater story or plot points, if there are any. But for what it's worth, it was actually still very entertaining. It's kind of weird because it seems a little more childish than similar shows at times, but then out of nowhere, they come out with a random joke about communism or something, so it's a little all over the place. But that doesn't actually make it bad. I think it actually gave it some sort of charm. Will I ever watch it again? Maybe. I don't know. But yeah, anyway, that was the end of the video. If you liked it, please leave a like and comment something. It can be literally anything. It helps out a lot. Just leave a comment. Also, if you're new here and you want to watch other cartoon videos, I have a bunch just like this. Check out the playlist. It's in the description. Paula Abdul scores this one a solid five ketchup bottles out of five. And yeah, thanks for watching. Okay, what's your game, you furry creep muffin?